Welcome back to another YouTube video. Um, in today's video, I just wanted to quickly show a few um, cool resources, good resources for learning Hebrew um, on the internet that um, I'm using at the moment. Um, I saw this stay home time as a result of the coronavirus just to try uh, improve a bit. Um, and I recommend that these are all good things to do um, simultaneously, um, that you don't just stick to one method because obviously conversing conversing with people with native speakers is usually the best way to acquire a language <laughs> you get practice at speaking and you get practice at listening um, but that mightn't be possible for a lot of people additionally um, the more vocabulary vocabulary um, that you can build for yourself uh, the more confident you're going to be when it comes to speaking so at the moment we're um, as we're stuck in uh, in quarantine was close proximity to some of our people down the road from us that were having good com a lot more conversations in Hebrew um, but these resources are also pretty good so there's a few things um, that I like to do one is to uh, look at the news um, in Hebrew and then do translation exercises um, so there's a few ways to do this one you can go on to um, you can go on to Hebrew news websites so Walla is a very big one um, I guess the thing you're looking for most is um, <coughs> a frequency something that's updated all the time um, the Hebrew in um, Hebrew news websites uh, can be quite difficult. Um, it's definitely not everyday Hebrew, but I think that's actually a good thing because if you're looking to improve, um, you know, your colloquial Hebrew and your idiomatic Hebrew, you can get a lot of that from watching Netflix, which I'm going to talk about next. I'm watching uh, Can, um, but this will give you some stuff that isn't so typically used every day like one of the classics that always people talk or you, you'll, that you'll see all the time in the Hebrew media is Emesh which means uh, yesterday uh, but it's not a colloquial word you'll never hear it said on the street um, so this is our this is the internet struggling under the uh, or just struggling under my lack of typing but uh, it's been kind of intermittent at the moment um, let's just see if you can actually find it in the dictionary I'll talk about morphic so it gives etmol which is a word everybody uses for yesterday in Israel but there's also uh, emish as I said which means um, uh, which means yesterday in a more um, in a more classical classical sense um, and it says here the Hebrew Academy actually wrote a blog post it says Hamila emish yadual um, so it's actually its origin uh, is actually from the Tanakh from the from the Bible Old Testament um, okay so basically this is number one and um, it's kind of hard going so I actually recorded a video of me working on two paragraphs of an article um, and then I decided it probably wouldn't be of such interest to people but that's what I'm trying to do I did literally um, obviously all the articles at the moment um, I'm recording this on the 5th of April are about the coronavirus so Derya Matzav Bishkhonot Chavrediot Berushalayim Chamu Yoter Me Bibnei Brak so that is talking about that the uh, neighborhoods that the coronavirus situation in the Haredi neighborhoods of, Un of, Un of Jerusalem um, and there's sometimes just words that I'm missing so I'll just kind of quickly uh, obviously Chamur uh, does not mean it's more of a donkey than a Bnei Brak um, so sometimes if it's like a new word, I'll pop it into Morphix, and I'll talk about Morphix in a second. Um, and learning to type in Hebrew actually is probably the most valuable thing, neglected thing I'd say that you could do. Um, obviously, this is the, it's the grave is the chamor um, is the meaning of, uh, of of in this context here, um, uh, drastic severe. Um, so yeah, uh, Morphix is really good, morphix.co.il, it's an English to Hebrew and Hebrew to English dictionary. Um, so you can type words in Hebrew, the, bu the, the very important thing about Morphix to know is that it provides the vowels. So um, I often use Google Translate if um, I'm just completely stuck on getting the meaning of a sentence at all and then I'll, if I'm building for myself a vocabulary list, um, I'll use Morphix to make sure that I have the nekudot, the uh, vowelization correct. Um, so yeah, I'll do probably a couple, I'm, I'm trying to do w at least one article per day, everything at the moment is about Corona, but that can make it good because you can learn, uh, if you're reading the English news, you can figure out stuff from context. Uh, so, Sarap Nim, Ta'an Bidiyun, Bavada'at Ta Corona, Ki Asiba, Ikarit, Alishu, and we did, we did this kind of stuff in Olpan as well, uh, I'm translating. There is also, um, if I Google, Chadashot Be'ivrit Kalla. 
Uh, the government also puts out hadashon.edu.gov.il The government, uh, I should say, the government puts out uh, an easy Hebrew version of the news. Um, so they've already got today's one up. Yom Rishon, Benisan, and this is a Hebrew year. Nagit Pekorona Mamshich. So they basically, you can do this as well. And they, they use this resource in Ulpan. I think it's actually prepared for the Ulpanim. Um, they do this bulletin that you can listen to. It's about a minute and a half, and they have one every day. So you can go back through this archive and. Uh, um, I'm just going to see what else they have on this website. Um, I think it's better to, uh, and they have validation for where they're in, in case of ambiguity as well, uh, just specifically for learners. Um, so this is good. I personally prefer to just bite the bullet and uh, tackle this stuff because I think if you can get to the get to the level of being able to comprehend full articles in Walla, um, there's also Ynet, or you can just type in Hadashot and you'll uh, you'll find the big ones. Walla, as I said, Ynet of a Hebrew edition. And uh, Shdemesre Israel Hayom. Um, a lot of these also have corresponding English editions, but uh, Haaretz, for example, have a big. Uh, so there's one. So you've got really quite a lot of options to choose from over here. Um, so much so that you could just spend your entire day translating um, from Hebrew to English, and although it would be kind of boring, I'd imagine you would probably end up with a pretty good vocabulary. Otsa uh, Milim. So basically, the next thing I like to do, um, the next strategy I recommend, you could say, and uh, excuse me for uh, choosing music in such bad taste, but uh, I'll put in um, any kind of. Uh, I actually like El Golan. That's that's the truth. Um, so I do not I do not mean that sincerely, but I know a lot of people aren't so keen on uh, Mizrahi music. But uh, anything that's in the charts, um, if you take some of these, this came out a few weeks ago. Er Golan, Mekan, Ve'adanetzach, anything that's in the charts, basically, you'll be able to find Milim. So if I type in Mekan, Ve'adanetzach, Eyal Golan, Milim, I'll be able to find, um, and this I actually used, um, I basically taught myself Spanish when I was in high school, uh, there was, we didn't teach Spanish. Um, I used to be a big language buff. I did Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, uh, which uh, probably seemed more impressive than it is because they're all Romance languages. Romance means anything um, derived from, I'm actually not sure, from ancient Rome, but Rome wasn't a language, but that's the meaning. So Romanian actually is in the family too. Spanish, Portuguese, Italian. So learning a few different, um, it's almost like learning dialects of one language. Um, so I did a lot of that. and. Hebrew, I used to do, I used to translate songs in Spanish, um, and that was actually fantastic because you'll be able to do this. Firstly, you learn a lot of obviously quite colloquial language, uh, so this is a nice complement to translating the news. Um, but then, if you enjoy the music, you will also be able to like reinforce your vocabulary when you're, um, when you're, you know, just uh, going to the gym or doing some exercise. So what I typically do is I'll make myself up a list and I'll just say, um, you know, uh, verbs, nouns, adjectives, adverbs, and I'll go through it like this and I'll translate a song and if there's something I don't know, um, I'll add it to the list and uh, I'll keep that in a folder basically. Uh, typically, um, you won't find so much stuff you don't know in uh, lyrics in terms of just vocab but you will build good idiomatic Hebrew and I think that's very important you know you also learn how people actually pronounce stuff um, so that's my technique number two uh, what other secrets uh, secrets can I spill and I'm by no mean I'm really uh, to be honest I'm quite behind on my Hebrew I've been in Israel for a number of years and uh, I would say my main my main distraction has been uh, business and uh, making money, which I think is really, it's uh, Aliyah when you move to Israel, if you're Aliyah is, is the process for Jews moving to Israel under the law of return. Um, and just so much comes comes up, uh, making a living, adjusting, making friends. So I think my Hebrew has fallen by the wayside a bit, uh, particularly as in I work in English um, almost exclusively. But, you know, I think if you live in a country, it's easy to create an immersion environment, even if your professional environment isn't always uh, conducive to learning. So, um, I think I will be able to get to, to like complete fluency. Um, I use the word fluency pretty strictly. Um, a lot of people say who are kind of what I would call conversational describe themselves 
as fluent. Um, I think I can get to real fluency, but it's going to be a battle. And people should be no under illusions, under no illusions as well that Hebrew is an easy language. Um, I think there's some uh, ranking system in which Chinese is like number one, and the uh, Semitic, sorry, well, Hebrew is a Semitic language. Um, in which the uh, Semitic languages and I think the Slavic languages are also pretty high as well. So here we go, category one, Italian, French, Spanish, right? So those are all in that category. German and Hebrew um, is in category four. Um, so that would be one, two, three categories above the um, Romance languages. So you have in this list Hebrew, um, I'm just talking about the Semitic languages here, Amoraic, Arabic, I'm surprised. Arabic must be one above. Arabic is indeed one above. And actually, Arabic, so I've also been learning Arabic um, a bit as well. Amiya, which is local Palestinian, Jordanian Arabic. Uh, um, Arabic is uh, is very, very hard. I'd say much, quite a bit harder than Hebrew because you have, um, you have a, in Hebrew, it's kind of, I don't want to use the word dumbed down, uh, but they basically did when they decided on a common variant of Hebrew to satisfy the needs of Yemenite Jews and Ashkenazi Jews and Sephardi Jews and Mizrahi Jews, they went for kind of a version that I maybe dumbed down is um, Hebrew alphabet because there's a lot of really great sounds uh, that you have in Hebrew uh, that have just been lost, namely the um, the harsh ayin sound, um, the hate like rahamim like you have in Arabic, I'm not sure what the phonetic for that is called, that's gone. In Gimel in Arabic, like you have Ayn and you have Ayn, uh, that sound, Gimel with uh, uh, Dagesh, is also unfortunately has been fell, fallen to the wayside. Uh, so, yeah, they've gone for it. It doesn't surprise me that Arabic's at the top of the list. But anyway, the point, I guess, was just to say that it's e it's, it is easy to be dissuaded, but Hebrew is actually a, uh, a hard language, so uh, it takes time and it takes effort. So that's number two as I translate. Number one was I translate the news, and as I said, this is a good way to learn. Um, uh, you know, um, if, if you want to, if you're using Hebrew in a professional context, you want to really increase your vocab. Two is Ivrit uh, Ivrit uh, Kala, and that is Chadshon dot edu dot gov dot il. That's Chadshon Ivrit Kala. Um, they also put this out in a uh, in a print format, by the way. That's what they do in in Ulpans. They're kind of old school. They literally will give you these newspapers. And uh, when I went to Ulpan Etzion in Jerusalem in 2015, uh, we were actually using uh, uh, tape cassettes as well, which I kind of found quite entertaining. Um, so they, you know, they they do have articles. This is a nice little one. Ulpanim Levrit Biyamei Corona. Um, okay, so it's nice, it's a little bit easier and you can translate, so you can do this exercise as well. Um, people actually are writing Zoom in Hebrew now, but they're just spelling it out in English here. Um, and the final one, um, which I'm trying to do a lot at the moment, and I'll just quickly call up my uh, the blog I wrote about this. Um, just a couple of days ago. Um, I basically pulled this from Facebook. I am uh, looking for shows in Hebrew and the ones the what I recommend is that you find shows with the audio in Hebrew and that have English subtitles. Um, once you get good enough um, you can learn a language by uh, looking at the audio and the subtitles in the target language. So your native language is your, the one you speak, and the target language is what you're is what you're learning. Um, so target audio native subtitles, uh, and that's what I'm doing. At, I just made this list from um, from Facebook. Basically, some of these are well known, and again, this is what's in the library on the fifth of April, and this is also what's in the library uh, in Israel itself. I'm not using a VPN. I'm literally connecting directly from a computer in Jerusalem to Netflix. So Stiesel, I'm just gonna give a quick preview over here. Uh, this basically, this is quite a heavy one. Uh, it talks about um, you know ultra orthodox life in uh, Geola, which is a um, Haredi um, suburb, Haredi suburb of Jerusalem. Sorry, suburb. I would say neighborhood. Um, just uh, just before Mea Sha'arim, and uh, it's kind of heavy. Uh, it's a little bit kind of too. I think sometimes a nice thing about um, about watching uh, watching TV is that you see a different environment than the one you you experience day to day. And certainly this is pretty close but uh, it's interesting and the main the main thing I mean when you're learning a language is really it's not a recreational I think this is a pretty recreational way to learn but um, you know what you're looking for is volume and that's actually quite hard in uh, in when you're learning Hebrew 
um, because you just don't have like Israelis learn English through watching movies and there's just thousands, tens of thousands of movies um, and all you have to find is one that's been subtitled dubbed into sorry subtitled into Hebrew um, the selection in Hebrew is much more limited because it's obviously a smaller market uh, but thankfully there are quite a few shows so the second one is Fauda uh, these are all famous Fauda you know it talks about the uh, Mistar Avim I think uh, actually that link is wrong Link for Fauda took me to took me to Stiesel again, uh, and I've just written in here whether there's English subtitles. Kecholim, for example, uh, is only in Hebrew audio, and it doesn't have uh, it doesn't have English subtitles. Um, so that's anyway. It's kind of a bit, I find it a bit boring. Um, and you can just see sometimes you can you can you can also type in um, this is where I, got, I just got a lot from searching in Hebrew and then um, you know search for Israel or search for Hebrew and. Uh, you will get quite a list over there. So some of these are on my list, some some of these are not. Uh, I'll just see if this one should be added to my list, and I will just quickly see. Yeah, so you see, this one doesn't have the English uh, subtitles. It's just got Hebrew and Hebrew. So there are more of these as Netflix become becomes more popular within uh, within Israel itself. When Heroes Fly is uh, kind of edgy about guys who are in the in a war of some sorts, I think in South Lebanon, and it's okay. The point I didn't finish earlier was you want volume, so this has got one, two, three. This has got eight, ten episodes, so that's something. Fauda and uh, Stiesel, I believe, have two on Netflix, and the third one coming soon. Um, so that's really what I would be looking for when I'm trying to follow a show is uh, how many hours of uh, how many hours can I watch it basically and the more the better really because uh, you'll just kind of cement your the learning uh, hostages hostages hatufim I got confused I got my uh, languages blurred together there so uh, this is um, about the guy that kind of captures uh, comes into takes a surgeon who's going to be operating the prime minister for hostage. Uh, I'm not particularly fond of it, but uh, you know it's a few more things. I don't, I don't like all these security um, in general. And unfortunately, I guess a lot of the stuff made here goes back to the themes, like the one in Fauda about the conflict in Kecholim, about the police, and when Hero flies about the war. Uh, it's kind of you know enough already. Sorry, Khatufim is not uh, hostages. Um, anyway, and then I've just made it. I haven't checked these. I've heard this is good. A Parliament uh, Mossad 101. Uh, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven more ones uh, that I'm going to be checking out. Uh, lots of time in over the forthcoming hop holiday of Pesach uh, to do that. Um, so that's a good one, and that comedy, so a nice break from the heavy war stuff. So that's my that's the other source is Netflix. So for a monthly subscription to Netflix, you can get quite a lot of bang for your buck in terms of learning. Um, the other thing I will just say is uh, you can check out Cannes uh, TV. Cannes is a national broadcaster of Israel and they have quite a few uh, series. Um, they put them into playlists. So if you go into the playlist tab, you will see, for example, um, mm -mm -mm -mm. Uh, they have some Sidrot over there. Sidrot are uh, shows. Um, so some of them are in English. I don't think is is Rock Guetta. I think it's only Hebrew. Um, they had a good one called, for example, just showing in, in uh, relocation. Can Echad Israel did this, and um, it's talking about basically Israelis moving abroad. And if you click in YouTube uh, and you go for subtitles, and I thought this was I really thought this was in English. Um, I watched the whole thing actually. It was it was pretty good. Yeah, it's it's Hebrew and and Hebrew. Um, I think Eretz Hayehudim Baim is in. Um, I think Hayehudim Baim has English. So this is again on Can um, Echadisre. They're kind of selective in terms of what they um, what they translate into. No, okay, that's weird. What they translate into. Um, Uh, yeah, this one has so, but it's not. It's uh, yeah. Sometimes you can search in English as well, and they'll actually have translated the whole. Th they've added the. Uh, so this this is in English. Um, they've added the actual uh, captions into the video track itself, as opposed to a caption track. So um, there are those are really the main options. I would say um, I'm always on the lookout for more. There's of course movies as well. Um, uh, Israeli movies that are somewhat successful will be translated to. 
uh, translated or given English captions and uh, you know for obvious reasons not everyone is because it's a job for somebody and I'm sure it takes time and it takes money so that's it those are my current resources um, in terms of reference resources actually I mentioned Morphix quickly and one other one I find very useful is Kitsurim uh, it's called kitsu.co.il so Hebrew has an awful lot of um, Kitsurim um, which are abbreviations so uh, if I type for example United States it's Artsota Brit but that you'll see that written like mm, 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 mm. you'll see this written like this in uh, Alright, so it's breach. Maybe I have that wrong, but uh, it's basically acronyms, and the, the acronyms are red. So you have, uh, for example, the UN acronym. The, the key to word for the UN is this: it's Aleph Vav Mem Sofit, with a um, quotation mark here. And they actually read this as Um. So you'll hear Ha Um, and that means the UN. And that's um, we can figure it out actually. So you can, if you don't know a key to word, you can put th you can put that into this website. It is in Hebrew only. Kitzurim uh, Um I'm not sure what the difference between a kitzur and a rosh and and rashetevot. Rashetevot are acronyms. Um, so U N U uh, N actually stands for umot meyuchadot, um, and that's where you get and the quotations before the final. Uh, the mem which stands for meyuchadot and as he said some of that is re some of these are read out literally that's read um artsota breed is I've never heard of read uh, artsota ab they just say artsota breed so it's not consistent um, but that's also a good resource and with um, more fix you should be able to type in most words and get them down to the shoresh so if we say for example ani um it'll bring it down to lamad the three letter Hebrew shorish of that vowel of that sorry of that um, of that verb and I actually learn a language and I'm kind of learning Hebrew just through um, almost like more like the Rosetta Stone method of just kind of learning patterns like pattern recognition um, I don't typically decline verbs and go through verb declination tables a besides a because it's terribly boring and b because I don't think it's a natural way to learn a language so um, you will get this three let three letter short shorish and it's up to you to know um, to you, to how to conjugate that. Um, if you type in a noun, for example, ivrit, uh, ivrit, it'll give you the gender of the noun as well. Shem zachar, a shem nekeva. Um, no, I'm, am I missing something here? Hebrew language. Um, it doesn't give. Usually, it does give. And you can also go the other way if you're look, looking up a word. Um, English and Gleet, okay, so it'll give you, as I said, the um, it'll give you the actual Nekudot here, which is very useful. Another a final, cool, final cool thing to have on your computer, if, or, if you're using Google Chrome as your browser, is the Google Translate um, Chrome extension. Uh, that means you can highlight just one word, and you'll get this little button, and it'll do a quick auto-detect auto the language and translate. Uh, so that's the Google Translate Chrome extension. Um, and the extension actually they have the extension for Firefox as well so if you're using Firefox uh, you can just get that okay that's um, those are all my current tools uh, maybe as I get more into this uh, process of improving my Hebrew over the Chagim I will be able to uh, you know uh, highlight some more resources and maybe do some live uh, translations as well uh, which I tried the last time but I felt it wasn't maybe super interesting to most people so I hope those uh, resources have been have been of some use Anybody that wants to get in touch is welcome to uh, just shoot me an email. My website is uh, danielrosehill.co.il and you have a contact form here which reaches me and you have my public uh, pretty good privacy PGP key if you are also uh, a fan of using end-to-end uh, -end encrypted email. Thanks for watching and uh, much success or as they say in your learning of Hebrew.